be talking about the uh, creative thinking skill of substitute. So on your blank page in your reflective journal, I want you to write the word substitute when you're teaching creative and, and critical thinking skills. Um, it's something that needs to happen with explicit instruction. We can't just tell kids to be creative. We can't just tell them to prove with evidence. We actually have to teach them what those things mean, why you do it, when we do it in the real world, why we do it in the academic setting. So to replace one thing for another in order to perform a purpose. And this purpose we're gonna talk about can be the same purpose or a different purpose. So when you have a substitute teacher, the teacher that comes, what is their purpose? Isaiah. To teach. To teach. So creative thinking today, we focused, at, we focused on substitution, which was taking something and substituting it for something else. And then we also discussed that you can substitute things for a different purpose or that you can substitute it for the same purpose. But they had to consider the context that it was happening in the environment. And they also had to consider the impact that, that substitution would have. So the first thing that we're going to think about, you are going to need the pink sticky with the lines that I already handed out to you. And we are going to pretend like we own a manufacturing company that makes pencils. And you have pencils in your hands, you use them every day. But our company has a problem. The problem that we have is we made way too many pencils and we're not selling them anymore. So the conversation we had the other day about when we add on, when a chef would add to its recipe, when a florist would add things to the floral arrangements, when a tailor would make a blouse look different, what were we saying the public wanted? What did we want to do? Make new things that nobody has ever made. We wanted to make new things that no one's ever made so that we could make what? Money, right? We wanted to sell it so that our company could make money. So we need to sell these pencils. We need to get rid of them. So the reason that I put that we could, ch we could substitute something to do the same thing is when we're thinking about pencils right now, we might not want the pencils to do what you do with them, which is what? To write. To write. So we're, not, we're not selling them to do that purpose anymore. Maybe we want to do something different with the pencils. So I'm going to give you one idea, and then with your groups or with your partner, I want you to come up with a list of uses for these pencils. So one idea that I had was, what if we could sell these to the public where they use them as chopsticks? Okay, so I want you and your partner to come up with a list. You can use it to make holes in paper instead of using a hole puncher. Let's see. You could use them as toothpicks. Oh. Yeah. And you could use them to hit stuff? Yeah. So, like drums. Yeah, like drumsticks. We can project an image out of it. Like oh this. yeah, it can be a projector. Crap. All right, Jesse, will you bring up your list that you have? And then I want you to share with everyone that's here what you guys start as the most original. So go ahead and come on up here. You're gonna put your list on this and then tell the group which one was your most original. I think the one that was most original was grappling hook. Grappling hook. So how would how could we use a pencil as a grappling hook? Like the lead pencils, you could like put like instead of lead string and then like a thing a metal thing that would like hook onto a wall like or something. In the so inside when you click it, so when you watches? click it it'll excellent job. That's pretty original. Did anyone else have a grappling hook? All right, thank you, Jesse, have a seat. For the input piece of this lesson, it involved pictures with problems, and the students had to generate ideas of how to solve the problem, and then we had discussions around what are the impacts of these choices, how is it relevant, making sure that if we're going to change what the lion is in, are we still meeting the purpose of being at a zoo? What are the ethical considerations around multiple perspectives? 
Um, and it allows them to think about when we make changes to something, we're not just going to substitute it just for the sake of substituting, but really thinking about why we're making those decisions and what are those impacts on whatever the problem is. So here is the scenario. The animals in the zoo are kept in cages that provide their habitat. The lion's cage was damaged and needed to be repaired. So what can we substitute this cage for while we fix it? Where can we put that lion? So I want you to talk with your neighbor about where do you think we could put this lion? What are some substitutes for this cage so that we can hire people to come in and fix the one that's broken? I think we should do like a clear crate that the lion can't break while they repair the cage. Like made out of glass? Yeah. I think they should make a, me a wooden one so it, even though it won't hold on, the metal cage should be repaired by then. Okay, Jesse's group, what did you guys come up with? Most of, um, we came up with like putting it in a in a glass cage, but a cage that little kids and animals can't break. Okay. Animals and kids. So, so we can still keep the public safe. They can still see the lion, right? And the lion isn't going to hurt anybody or hurt itself. Do you guys agree that the, putting the lion in glass is a good substitute? Now we discussed with the pencils that we made the pencils do something different. But this time with the substitution, are we still doing the same purpose? Yeah. Yeah. What is the purpose, Jesse, of your glass cage? Keeping the animals safe and keeping the audience safe. But we can still enjoy it, right? We can still enjoy it. So now we're going to change the focus from kind of non-academic settings with the pencils and the zoo and this, and now we're going to change the context. So we're going to have to shift mental gears. So this time, we had already read a story called Cinderella. Does everyone remember reading that story? Yes. yes. So I would like for you to get out the graphic organizer for the story that we read from your office that looks like this. What I'm going to give to you, you have two different versions of Cinderella that you can choose from to read. And I had already shared with you other versions of Cinderella where just some things changed. You guys are going to read this version of Cinderella and you are going to fill out the same graphic organizer so that we can have a discussion around what did this author change? What did they substitute? So the first one that you can read is called Cinderfella. So instead of Cinderella, this is about a boy, so the character is changed. The other one is, and these are just called fractured fairy tales because they changed part of it, is where Cinderella is at school. Everybody was, everybody that was made fun of ice, but one day standing at the house, I get that. how do I get that? She said out loud. Wait. Main character switch. Go to go to the bar and meet the boy. Mm -hmm. Who lives with the main character? Uh, the stepmother and the stepsisters. What was different from the main story that we read about Cinderella? What was different? What did the author change? What did they substitute? Skylar, what was different? In the Cinderella fractured, Cinderella didn't, didn't clean the house. He was in school. He was at school? So what you're going to do is when we read Cinderella on the back of your pumpkin, I had you write your favorite story. Guess what you're going to do with your favorite story? We're going to substitute things. So you need to consider the parts of your story, who are the characters, what are the settings, what goes on, and things that you can substitute. What if I changed this? How would the story be different? So you're going to play with it and make your own story that you know and like really funny. So what you're going to get is a story map to help you map it out. You have two different things you can choose from. You can choose a story map where it's mostly pictures over time and you can write down what's going on. Or if you prefer story maps where it's more set out like we did Cinderella, 
to make changes, you can use that one. You can use either one, whichever one works best for you to get your thoughts out. Okay, so this is what we're going to do for independent practice. During yes. the output section of the lesson, it's important to consider that the students aren't just repeating the same thing that we've already done. So it had nothing to do with pencils, it had nothing to do with pictures we've already talked about, and it didn't have to do with a fairy tale. It had to do with a story where the students are choosing a story that they like and know well, but number one, they get student choice, and number two, it doesn't have to be a fairy tale. That way it's not mundane and not repetitive. So the students were then going to build their storyboard with their story that they're going to fracture or change and subst substitute pieces of it with something new. So that brings that motivational hook and the interest into the actual output because that's, that's part of the issue with teaching kids is how do you keep them interested in the product that you have them creating.